Welcome to Break for Art. My name is Jennifer Crosdale, and I am the Education Coordinator for Audience Relations here at the Dallas Museum of Art. Today we're going to spend some time looking closely at Sheaves of Wheat by one of my favorite artists, Vincent Van Gogh. To completely immerse ourselves in this experience, I would like to encourage you to make this image your full screen so that painting is your sole focus. Let us begin by simply looking at this work of art for a full minute. I know that many of you are probably familiar with seeing this painting in person in our Wendy and Emery Reeves collection at the museum. And maybe you've just given it a quick glance or taken a picture in front of it and then continued on with your visit. But today I would like to challenge you to simply slow down and focus on just looking. Maybe start at the bottom of the canvas and then work your way up to the top or take a moment to observe the colors, the energy, the brush strokes, or the positioning of the objects in the field. As you are looking, I would like you to consider a few questions. What is the first thing you notice about this painting? What stands out to you and why? How does this painting make you feel? Does this painting bring up any memories of being in a similar scene or location? On June 17 in 1890, Dutch artist Vincent Mego received a large shipment of new canvases in a format that he had never used before. These 13 double square canvases measuring roughly 50 by 100 centimeters were the last work Vincent Van Gogh completed before his death on July 27th of the same year. Our Shoes of Wheat painting is amongst those final works. Although there has been much speculation over which painting exactly he was working on on that last day in the field on July 27th, and we may never know because he didn't date or sign these later images. We do know, however, that it had to be amongst his last as he's depicting the wheat harvest that occurred every mid-July. There are three formal elements that I would like for us to dive into as we continue our slow, close-looking tour of Sheaves of Wheat. Please consider composition, color, and my favorite, his brushstrokes. When you were looking at this work of art for a full minute, what was the first thing that struck you? How did your eye move around the canvas? Was it simply top to bottom because I might have suggested that? Did you follow the brushstrokes up the wheat stacks? Were you mesmerized by the swirls of paint that were cast on the ground in the violent color? There are lots of ways in which the artist can help guide your gaze around a canvas, and composition is one of them. Arranging the visual elements in an inviting way to intrigue the viewer to take a closer look can help communicate the artist's statement. And that's really what composition is all about. R. Reeves' picture focuses on the grain and the harvest, and it seems to celebrate the rhythms and colors of nature and elevate the labor of working in the fields. One element I would like to bring up as we look at this painting is balance. Do you think that this painting has a balanced composition? What is the focus here? We see before us eight stalks of wheat, and if we were to divide this canvas in half, are there an equal number of objects on the left side as there are on the right? Is there an area of the canvas that you think has more weight or focus? What draws you in? How does the overall placement of these stocks make you feel? One thing that struck me while we were looking at this composition is that there's no horizon line. Instead of depicting where the land meets the sky, as is typical in most landscapes, Van Gogh has decided to instead immerse us directly into this harvested field so that it feels like we're standing right there in front of these big, bold, freshly cut, towering stalks of wheat. For an artist who's known for depicting vast swirling skies and uniquely formed clouds, I think it's interesting that he chose to omit the sky in this painting. Why do you think he chose to do that? There is something a little claustrophobic about this composition to me. I feel like we're trapped in the field. Unlike some of the other landscapes that he painted in the same narrow rectangular format, Sheaves of Wheat seems to be a cropped close-up of a larger image, like a study of the harvested wheat. Another thing that stands out to me is the manner in which he depicts these bundles. 
It's almost as though each stalk of wheat has its own unique personality and they're differently trying to distribute their weight to model, like posing for an artist. And he's trying to grapple with depicting their regular shapes. Many artists have depicted these fields of harvested grain, but none have managed to convey the intimacy of a family portrait with sheaves of wheat the way that Van Gogh has done here. These double square format canvases were unique to Van Gogh's career, not simply because of their format, but because 12 of the 13 canvases were focused on painting horizontal landscapes, which seems to indicate that he was working on another series. Let us now examine Van Gogh's use of color. What stands out to you about his palette in this particular painting? When you think of a Van Gogh painting, what is the first thing you think of? Are these the usual colors you associate with his paintings? Do these colors seem warm, cool, vibrant, or muted? We are extremely fortunate in that we have many of Van Gogh's letters to refer to, in which he describes how he wanted to use color in his paintings. In his letters to his brother Theo, he would sometimes include a sketch of a larger work he was creating and then map out where the color would go in his writing. He also talked about which colors he would use to depict the seasons. Pink and whites were what he used in the spring, and in the summer his preference was to use yellow and violet to depict the fields of grain and the summer light. Yellow was his favorite color. It's the color of warmth, the light that he was searching for in the south. It's the sun, the life force of all of nature. It was in the south of France and Arles that he developed this vibrant palette and use of blood yellow that Van Gogh is known for. However, I can't help but notice that this painting does not have that vibrant yellow that we saw him use in his paintings of the sunflowers. These colors, although striking, are somewhat subdued and tame. This entire canvas is bathed in yellow and he is using varying shades of yellow to make up the bundles of wheat, the ground, and even the shadows that have bits of purple and violet. In the upper left-hand corner, we have some bright green, which looks like it could be a distant tree. There's also some more bright green at the top in the center of the canvas, which could be bushes or some other type of vegetation. And in my opinion, he probably placed it there to kind of balance out the green and the composition. In the background, we see two horizontal strips of color. One is a muted yellow that could be land, and the other strip is a light aqua blue that could be representing a stream or a river. The stalk of wheat in the middle of the composition is the only one that has a bit of red on the right side, from the top all the way to the bottom. The other stalks all have a dark ochre color, which kind of gives the viewer the indication that the light source is facing the sheaves of wheat from the left side viewing the canvas and flowing through the composition in a diagonal stream. Most of the shadows and contrasting colors of varying shades of purple are a direct complementary color of yellow on the color wheel. I want to conclude our time with taking a closer look at Van Gogh's brush strokes. Aside from the composition and the color, which we've already discussed, what do you notice about his brush strokes in this painting? What is different? What is the same? What is what makes this a Van Gogh. Compared to some of his other more well-known landscapes, these brush strokes are more orderly, kind of farther spaced out and almost sketch-like. This painting reminds me of an oil sketch. It seems unfinished, like he planned to come back later and flesh it out some more. When you think of paintings like Starry Night, you think of several smaller, closely knit brush strokes that were very tightly woven together to convey movement and energy. Instead of the violent rhythms and fast pace of the brush strokes from many of the paintings he produced while in the asylum in Saint Rémy, in Sheaves of Wheat, we have a more relaxed, orderly brush stroke that seems to gently caress each bundle of wheat lovingly. This work seems calmer to me, not just in its muted colors, but also in the placement of every application of paint. There is a sense of empathy in his work that gives the viewer an insight to what the artist is feeling and his connection to nature, 
which somehow enhances his subject matter. It's almost like a soulscape within a landscape. I hope that you've enjoyed taking a closer look at Sheaves of Wheat with me today. Hopefully you learned something new about this artist or noticed something different about a painting that you've always loved. I want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to break for art. And I look forward to seeing you again virtually or in person at the DMA very soon. Thank you.